Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I'm sitting in my car. I'm at a travel ball tournament and I can see the players out there right now and they have not yet started so I was going to do a quick video. First, I haven't heard from Dark Defender in a while. Let's have a look at the monthly chart. We expect August for the move, XRP to decide. Supports and resistance are getting closer. Could it be June? Folks, I'll tell you right now, I think this thing is done. I've heard enough. I've heard Brad Garlinghouse and Monica Long talk about those Hinman emails. I've heard enough. I think this thing is done. I don't know how it's done, but I think it is. That's my gut. And my gut's right 99.9% .9 of the time. My first expectation is to see, and this is not mine, it's, it's Dark Defender. His expectation is to see XRP above 50 cent first, then dance to, to the targets, 382 and $22. I hope he's right. Jeremy Hogan, um, yesterday the library had tweeted um, out that they, it was like their, I think they said it was their final motion or something, and I think they made some comment like they thought uh, either John Deaton and Jeremy Hogan and James Filan would think they were stupid or would think they were genius or something like that. Jeremy Hogan says library's asking the court to clarify that secondary sales of library are not affected by the judgment. Watch out for this ruling as this is a possible scenario in the Ripple case with the SEC asking for a broad, vague injunction and Ripple seeking clarity from the judge. This is going to be interesting because if you remember, the judge in this library case did not rule on that the fact, but the judge, as I recall, looked at the SEC attorneys as well as the library attorneys and said, we all agree that the library token itself in the secondary market is not a security, right? But they didn't officially rule. It's just on the record that that was said is the way I understand it, but I'm not an attorney. Um, I don't remember, I don't think I played you this clip. Ripple Partnership mentioned at Swift Cybos. I'm going to play it anyway. Again, how has the past few years really impacted the idea of ecosystems, your collaborations, your partnerships, um, and ac even acquisitions? And then has that actually um, changed via region? Yeah, as I said, um, we basically accelerated our our uh, total journey into uh, the payment space. Uh, while we were experimenting in the beginning with, as I said, with um, Alipay Hong Kong or with GCash in Philippines, uh, we very early on had a, uh, in 2015, we started um, a partnership with Ripple, where we um, experimented, or actually give uh, more than an experiment, we, we give uh, possibilities for our corporates to do cross-border payments. But um, it, now, and in Africa, uh, we have the mobile wallets, which are pervasive over there. So very early on, uh, we had a lot of interaction uh, with um, uh, the mobile wallet providers um, in Kenya and other countries, uh, how to connect. Uh okay, very interesting. Then you got this, look at this, Cowboy Crypto, who is the official cowboy of the Digital Asset Investor channel. Um, it says, listen to the video and read below. Uh, we helped obtain working group for which industry working group with Swift and banks around the table to scale to 1 million transactions per second on our platform. Working group she's talking about, in my opinion, is the U U.S. Faster Payments Council, which Amazon's new head of payments, Ken Kurska, founded. Ken's also a member of the FedNow community group and member of Business Payments Coalition for Federal Reserve. Craig DeWitt from Ripple, he's not with Ripple now. Um, was with was the U.S. Faster Payment Council vice chair after leaving Ripple. He has since moved on, but Pat Thielen and James Selleck both still represent Ripple in this working group, along with some of the biggest names in finance. Faster. So here's uh, his. Um, you got this guy, Ken Kruska, head of product AWS Payments, founding member past, uh, Faster Payments. Uh, then you got Pat Thielen. Uh, Craig DeWitt is no longer there. I don't think. Maybe he is. I don't think he is. He's now full-time at Super Mojo. But Pat Thielen from Ripple is a board advisory group member. And James Selleck is cross-border payments working group chair, who's also with Ripple. So there you go. Now, wait a minute. i got to push something on the car so that it doesn't turn off. Okay. 
So let's go down and listen to this video right here. About this because it's not easy, it's constantly changing. Exactly, and, and I think as with SWIFT, the focus is inter interoperability with all these new schemes that are coming up. For us, the focus is on implementing technology that can support those innovations. So like you were mentioning, global, scalable, resilience, those are the things that we're focusing on. Just to give you an example, we um, have uh, participated in a pilot on a blockchain-based implementation, um, and we helped the team, the working group, which is actually an industry working group with SWIFT and banks uh, around the table, uh, to scale to one million transactions per second in our platform. Now, what we are doing is ensuring that the platform grows as the innovation from SWIFT and from the industry is demanding, and that's what we're focused on. Um, another area that we are innovating a lot is uh, and related a lot to what Tom is doing in terms of artificial intelligence and the use of machine learning for all different areas of financial services. Uh, we are innovating in confidential computing. We know that data sharing across institutions is very important, but we know that it needs to be remain confidential for each one of those institutions. So that's an area that we at AWS, are in, 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 you know, all the cloud providers, obviously are innovating and that's what we are uh, focused on and working with the business teams from SWIFT and the banks to ensure that we can support them with the technology um, that innovation that needs to happen so we're innovating very fast on that area but I think the demands are actually going faster sometimes than the innovations <laughs> you got to each other <laughs> pace with each other exactly yes Amazon Web Services you know what that reminds me of uh oh Kendra Hill that dip disappeared off of um, social media um, Kendrill revealed a few things back in 2018. XRP and XL, XLM were the chosen ones. Ripple and AWS announcement coming. She also said that Amazon owned 5 billion XRP. We shall see. That would have to be a pre-allocated contract, I'm assuming. That's a dirty word, though. You can only say it on this channel and maybe one or two others. Uh, John Deaton says, Uphold deciding to not suspend the trading of XRP simply because a lawsuit was filed by, by compromised, conflicted regulators whose motives were questioned by one of the most esteemed SEC regulators of all time, Grunfest, will go down as one of the best decisions in crypto history. Now look what Mark, Dr. Martin Hisbach from Uphold says. The biggest supporter and only active U.S. choice for XRP fans, Uphold, launching institutional business and trading platform just as the situation gets resolved. Just as the situation gets resolved. As in XRP case gets resolved. And he's got a hashtag Hinman, hashtag SEC. I like this guy. He throws bombs. Now listen, folks. They also announced that they, I got an email from Uphold saying that they're going to have a custody vault too. You have to wonder, folks, is this thing already over? That's what I'm wondering. Look what Ashley Prosper says here. XRP community, what do you think the SEC was discussing with JP Morgan when talking to them about Ripple and or XRP? Hopefully we will find out by the latest deadline of June 3rd. So this is another deadline. If they don't hand over the information by June 3rd, there's a lawyer ready and waiting. There will be no messing about. Now, th what this is, folks, is Ashley Prosper. This could be bigger than the Empower Hinman. What we're waiting on right now is the Hinman emails from the Ripple case, which is the, the conversations between the people at the SEC. Then you have the Freedom of Information Act request from Empower which has the whole laundry list of people that they want to know if they communicated with Bill Hinman outside the SEC, the peep that list. Then you have this one, deadline June 3rd, where Ashley Prosper, who I think is an attorney and says she's got an attorney waiting in the wings uh, to hand over any communication about Ripple and or XRP with JP Morgan from the SEC. Now that's an interest. That one could be more that one could be bigger than all of it. There's a lawyer ready and waiting. There will be no messing about. The case uh, could be filed in the rocket docket and should move very quickly. The SEC is, un is an untrustworthy agency. J.P. Morgan is even less trustworthy. So when the two of them get together to whisper behind the backs of other market participants, it's cause for concern. On, the, on another FOIA note, I've requested this ex elusive digital assets registration form that Gary Gensler keeps telling people to come in and register on. We'll see what they produce, if anything at all. Deadline for that is June 8th. 
Actually, Prosper is knocking it out of the park. Then we got this from Michael Branch. XRP whales particularly addressing holding 10 million to 100 million XRP have been augmenting their holdings since May 7th. These addresses have purchased over 52 million XRP. In other words, whales are buying XRP. And finally, we got this, which is one flew over the cuckoo's nest crazy. Signs of a potential FTX 2.0 are emerging as CEO John Ray III has dedicated 6.7 hours to 2.0 related matters. Well, we may as well, somebody may as well start a firm called Madoff 2.0. That makes about as much sense. Or Enron 2.0. Or how about MF Global 2.0? I mean, the air. The, it's arrogance, folks. The arrogance of what's going on in this country is crazy. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family. The arrogance is unfreaking believable. Thank you.